Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. You're watching the Big Picture with me, Frank Rajan Pereira. The government is working on completing the stake sale process of about 23 public sector companies whose uh, disinvestment has already been cleared by the cabinet. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman said on Monday. The minister also said she would soon meet small finance firms and non-banking finance companies to review the credit being extended by them to businesses. The minister said the government wants to sell stake in public sector companies at a time when it fetches the right price. For the 2020-21 fiscal, the government has set a disinvestment target of 2.1 lakh crore rupees. Of this, 1.2 lakh crore rupees will come from in disinvestment of public sector undertakings and another 90,000 crore rupees from stake sale in financial institutions. In this edition of The Big Picture, we will analyze the disinvestment of uh, PSUs. Joining me on the program today are Sushil Chandra Tripathi, former Principal Secretary, Finance, Uttar Pradesh. Also with us on the program is Shubhavai Bhattacharji, Consulting Editor of the Business Standard and S.P. Sharma, Chief Economist, PhD Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on this edition Thank of you, The sir. Big Picture. All right. Uh, Mr. Tripathi, let me start the program with you. What are your thoughts really on the government deciding to go ahead with the disinvestment of 23 PSUs? You see, lots of changes have taken place in the Indian economy, society and polity since 50s. In 50s and 60s, it was necessary to set up public sector undertakings, particularly in the key areas uh, basic industries, whether they were steel plants or BHEL, ONGC and such companies. But thereafter, now in the last 50 years, the whole scene has changed. Indian industry has come of age. Many of these public sector undertakings, all, they had number of objectives apart from uh, being uh, in the basic industry sector. They were also supposed to take up regional development, job creation. Now, regional development and job creations are being done directly by the concerned governments, state governments and central governments. And therefore, those objectives are no longer important. And uh, what has happened is over a period of time, now these public sector industries, many of them are functioning in the areas where private sector has come up and, and efficient private sector enterprises are also functioning. So these uh, undertakings are suffering in competition. And if they are not disinvested at an appropriate time, then over a period of time, many of them will become sick. In fact, many of them have already become sick. I, uh, I find Scooter India, which for last 10 years has been on the list of uh, uh, units to be privatized. But there is hardly anything much left there except land. And many of these undertakings have outdated technology, they are not really competitive. So it is a good time to divest them. Uh, in the list of 23, I think maybe about four or five will uh, attract good uh, buyers and uh, reasonable and attractive prices. The others are unlikely to. So, but one has to go ahead and this is a time when the government needs money. So rather than putting money in these undertakings to revive them, to modernize them, it is better since they are not uh, really serving any uh, any strategic purpose, they should be divested. Of course, Air India is a large undertaking that is also in the list. And uh, some attempts were made in the past. It is difficult to divest the whole of Air India. Maybe some parts may be separately done. The undertaking which is the most valuable in the list, I find, is BPCL. And it is a, an appropriate time to divest BPCL because... Uh, we have Indian oil, which is uh, twice the size of BPCL remaining in the public sector. And HPCL has gone to ONGC. ONGC is in critical areas. So ONGC will continue to do PSC. So there is uh, uh, you know, no great merit in keeping BPCL uh, in the public sector. And BPCL is an attractive company. And the valuation is more than lakh crore. So government share may fetch about 70,000 crore in BPCL itself. And if it is not uh, divested now, then with, uh, you know, private sector companies like Reliance and others coming in and foreign uh, parties also showing interest in the retail uh, business of uh, oil products, BPCL may not remain that attractive in future. 
Okay, as far as certain entities are concerned, the time is ripe and the time is now is what Mr. Tripathi is suggesting. VPCL on top of that list as far as he is concerned. Shubhamoy, let me bring you into the picture now. So, talking about, you know, the timing really as far as uh, this is concerned and taking the point that Mr. Tripathi is making forward, is this the right time to go for disinvestment considering the prevailing market conditions? That's a point, yeah. You know, to, let's let's put it this way, 2 lakh 10,000 crore is not something that we are going to get this year. I mean, if we are lucky, we'll get away with BPCL. Uh, the other one that we had planned about was LIC, which uh, is pretty difficult. I mean, two big things uh, for the government to really say, uh, move through in one fiscal year is practically impossible. So, uh, definitely those numbers, let's not take them, I mean, uh, that, that those would be coming along. Uh, BPCL and Concord, these two are the ones which the government is most hopeful of getting through in this year. They should, uh, between the two of them, they should get around uh, 90,000 or crore. That's what the government estimates. Um, the rest would be, you know, I mean, it will depend on the markets are good, but uh, uh, quite a bit of amount has been lost because in terms of the uh, the work that was done initially in terms of, you know, uh, flagging investor interest, setting up uh, expressions of interest, I mean, the entire sequence, that period has got a bit disturbed. So uh, we really don't have too much time starting from July now till uh, March to be able to put more, too many uh, of the big ones into the into, into the uh, seller's basket. What it does mean, of course, is that the government every year is getting confidence now to sell. And BPCL is an important sale because it is a genuine sale. It uh, publicity companies have been told not to bid for it. Now, that's very important. Uh, it, it, it because uh, there's no point selling a company to another publicity company as HPC as in the case of HPC it was done. That's simply as the government, but it really give us any any financial. I mean any any major uh, leg up to the economy. So yes, that that would be coming along. That list of uh, 23 has to be read with what the finance minister has talked about in terms of, you know, keeping only a few sectors A as strategic and B within those strategic, keeping not more than four PSUs. Of course, it will down depend on what are the, today in our newspaper, we have talked about which are the possible sectors, where they will be, uh, which could be kept as strategic. Railway is one of those, insurance is being talked about. Uh, most of the banking will be there. So, you know, those, those would be the sectors where the government would want to keep a more role to play as a play for the government, for, for the state. But still, there's enough and more to allow for the for the private sector to come. I mean, now since we're saying that uh, the private sector in India is big, it has the ability, uh, the big question also would be whether we would allow foreign investors because a lot of the money would, that would be coming in would be for money from abroad. Uh, that is always a touchy question and that I suppose will depend on a case by case basis that which are the companies that go into that particular, uh, into the, into that sort of uh, bidding. So yes, it is, but, but, the, uh, but there's no doubt of the fact that disinvestment is now more, instead of just being a top more thing, it is really the, top, uh, the work is happening. Okay. All right. So, S.P. Sharma, uh, you know, talk, uh, Shubhamoy brought up in, uh, investor sentiment, you know, is there investor interest really in these entities that the government is looking to disinvest? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Pereira, uh, because now we are in a new economics. After the Lehman crisis, economy was quickly changed. And particularly during the last four or five years, there is a lot of change in the global economic environment, starting from uh, tussle between uh, US and China and then trade war and then impact on the global economy. Now we are uh, facing a phase of uh, COVID. So going forward, now the global money is looking for uh, good growth partners and India is one of them. Of course, India uh, India is a, an attractive uh, destination in the global economic system. And uh, uh, during, the last, uh, during the 50s, 60s, 70s, we were a closed economy. Uh, we were uh, very, very closed and uh, most of the investments were in the public sector units and uh, dominance of the public sector units. But after the 70s, in 80s, we were uh, restrictive. And uh, in 90s, with the Rao Manmohan uh, model of uh, globalization, 
liberalization and privatization we were open and uh, we uh, liberalized the economy and uh, uh, then again in the 2000s we were in a globalized uh, manner and we opened the economy and we were the most integrated and our uh, uh, trade to gdp ratio increased like anything and we were only 40% of the um, uh, uh, capital receipts and capital payments and uh, current receipts and current payments uh, of gdp but now more than 100% so the global integratedness increased year after year so now is time 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 is most opportune uh, for the privatization because now privatization is only way for the indian economy to to push the growth trajectory because we are facing severe slowdown in the growth trajectory we decelerated from 7% to 6% then 4.2% so now the role of private sector becomes very very crucial to push the growth trajectory and to and to uh, and to make fruitful the ease of doing business which has been uh, uh, which has been uh, uh, disseminated by the government and uh, which is which is the thrust of the government and we have improved a lot from 144 to 63 during the last five uh, five six years so now this should be supported by a good policy environment with the uh, with the support of the private sector because private sector is always a major catalyst to push the growth trajectory of any economy and in indian case private sector is very very aggressive and i believe uh, more and more efficiency in the public sector units with the support of the private sector will also interact the uh, uh, attract foreign investments now we are only 60 70 billion dollar in the foreign direct investment um, uh, uh, on annual basis so going forward we have a lot of potential to attract 100 billion dollar in the next i believe 2 3 years we will be a 100 billion dollar investment destination in the fdi scenario so we have to support this uh, uh, thought process of the government and this is a good move i i believe this will uh, push the growth trajectory to the next level but here i would like to mention a few points which uh, needs to be considered because the cost of doing business is very very high still uh, uh, we are facing a lot of uh, uh, representations from the industry that cost of doing business is high though the government uh, has pushed the ease of doing business and now we are very much comfortable in these doing business but that should also be supported by the reduced cost of doing business so that private sector is working efficiently and uh, uh, and and showing the good uh, results so private sector always work on the price cost margins good price cost margins so that is a major attraction for the private sector that that that, uh, that the companies are coming and investing in india and operating from india uh, so at this juncture i believe uh, the the partnership of the private sector and the government will attract more and more investments and uh, this is a good move not only for the uh, psus or for the government but also uh, for the development story of india because we 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 are now uh, in a uh, in a juncture of uh, transformation now we have to support our infrastructure in many forms we need infrastructure and we have to provide lot of employment opportunities for our growing young workforce and that needs a state of the art infrastructure government has already earmarked a lot of funds for the infrastructure sector more than uh, 100 lakh crore uh, allocations are there sectoral allocations are there but this needs to be supported by the partnership the partnership of the government the partnership of the uh, private sector the partnership of the uh, psus so i think this is a, a good move and the time is more uh, most opportune uh, to implement this scenario right now okay taking okay. the discussion forward now so uh, mr tripathi uh, you know is there a policy or a pattern that the government follows when it comes to disinvestment and meeting targets <laughs> well targets of course you know are set at the time of budget uh, with a view to meet the shortfall and to control and contain the fiscal deficit but uh, targets are one thing and achieving targets is uh, depends on many other factors last two years also there were uh, significant targets for uh, disinvestment of course, once a policy decision is taken that disinvestment has to take place in certain areas and it depends uh, in those areas where there is enough competition and a public sector need not be present or there is more than one public sector in that area, for example, in like in oil sector. So those uh, issues are there. Thereafter, you know, the uh, different ministries are asked uh, which are the entities they find that they are suitable candidates for disinvestment. They may be uh, due to different reasons. As I, uh, you know, I in year 2000, when the major uh, one major entity was disinvested was Balco, 
and at that time as additional secretary mines i was the last government appointed cmd of balco so balco was a profit making company but it was taken up for disinvestment because it had an old technology the mines had exhausted and uh, there was nalco which was a much efficient a larger plant in the government sector so government decided that balco can go for disinvestment and uh, the results have been uh, good in the sense that uh, government got money and the remaining shares of the government are now priced much better and the company is doing much better so that way the disinvestment targets uh, are kept but then the entities have to be found which are suitable for disinvestment uh, so that they attract investment and they are significant investment for example in many entities i find the list of 23 there may not be significant investments coming in but there are some which may attract significant investment so there will be a combination of both and uh, the government has to do a lot of work to attract investment there is of course sectoral limit for investment in many areas in yeah. some areas it is 100% for an investment some areas it is 74% some areas 49% but now the, mostly uh, there is a liberalized regime for foreign investment and as has been mentioned by mr sharma we are now in a globalized environment so in most major undertakings the foreign investment will have to be attracted and uh, it will demand a lot of uh, due diligence and also uh, a market situation in which they find it attractive so there are some companies which will find for example bpcl even air india may find foreign investment earth movers may find but there are many others which may not so for them the domestic investors will have to come forward and it is true that at this point of time the domestic investors are not in a very happy situation because of the general condition of the economy so i am therefore not um, very sanguine as far as the other companies are concerned but you know bpcl because uh, world over the consumption of petroleum products in india is continuing to increase in other places in the developed economies it is not so many major companies are looking at indian market and this is an opportunity that they can uh, avail of uh, so, but you know the finance companies which the uh, uh, finance minister mentioned for example we have more than 20 banks now in 1970s early 70s it was uh, reasonable to expect that they'll be taken over and it was a perhaps a good policy to uh, take over the uh, banks and have bank nationalization because our coverage the financial coverage was very limited but now we have an adequate financial coverage and in the digital world you need not have physical presence in the villages or physical presence in everywhere to uh, extend financial support or extend uh, financial assets and loans or to take deposit etc so now you need not have 25 banks some of these banks can be privatized quite easily and i think a rationalization is taking place some have been merged and others have been left out and perhaps left out for privatization but they may also not have a very a, a great attraction lic of course will have a great attraction it is a very large company and government perhaps is thinking of uh, selling 10% of shares whether this year or next year i don't expect government to privatize lic but sh some shares of lic may be uh, disinvested and that will bring uh, quite a handsome amount of money right shubhoy uh, you know so mr tripathi went back in uh, time and spoke about balco and nalco so what has our experience really been as far as disinvestment is concerned you know the disinvestment is uh, probably been our uh, best uh, what i should say um, kept uh, not uh, best, best best interested area of public policy where there's been a lot of debate so essentially what happens is that disinvestment whether it has succeeded or not one is of course one can measure by market cap what has been the change the other is in terms of the public perception way in which disinvestment has been worked on is basically from that model that disinvestment will be a strategic will be a sale to a strategic partner not just selling equity in the market to uh, the large body of investors that frankly is in disinvestment which has happened in banks so uh, by that yardstick of strategic sales we haven't had too many of those we had earlier on uh during the party's time as he talked about balco we had about hindustan zinc 
but they are the uh, stories. Uh, some of the ITC, some of the ITDC hotels. But after that, it wasn't done. It's now that it's again been done. And now we are looking at a clear change of ownership. And that is an interesting scale of uh, uh, play also because it means that the companies which come in have to show that they have the ability to be able to take on that sort of a uh, challenge because these are big companies where you will have to if you're going to keep them as going concern what is the plan that you would be able to do uh, not many Indian companies as rightly pointed out have this the financial muscle to be able to do it all right so sp sharma so what are the challenges really when we look at uh, disinvestment and especially these companies that we have spoken about over the last 20 minutes or so uh, yes, uh, Mr. Prera, very good question. Firstly, I must appreciate the connotation by uh, Tripathiji that we are in a globalized world and we have to integrate it more and more with the world economy with the support of the uh, private sector to move forward and to become a US dollar 5 trillion economy going forward. Uh, and Shubhamoya mentioned that uh, uh, the policy that uh, uh, the most of the PSUs uh, must be supported by the policy environment. I am on the same page that uh, uh, policy environment must be very, very conducive for the disinvestment and the privatization for the more and more participation of the private, private sector. Because if the policy environment is not that much conducive and there are uh, uh, pol uh, paralysis in the policy environment, then the disinvestment will not work and will not be fruitful for the growth of the economy. So policy environment, conduciveness of the policy environment and the disinvestment and the participation of the private sector will uh, must be in, uh, in 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 collaboration uh, to for the fruitful results. So at this juncture, I would like to mention that most of the PSUs are representing the natural resources of India. So firstly, we have to uh, provide a longer term policy environment, which is very very conducive for the whole of the uh, whole of the uh, PSUs and for the uh, for the exploitation of the natural resources going forward. So uh, at this juncture, the, if, if the policy environment and the thought process of the government uh, to, uh, to sell the PSUs and uh, this investment more and more uh, uh, must be in synchronization. So if there is some policy bottlenecks, then the this investment will not work. So going forward, uh, my connotation is that, uh, they are, that, that, that reforms in the policies uh, must be there in consultation with the private sector and in consultation with the major stakeholders that yes, these policies are very, very conducive and the growth of the uh, PSUs and uh, with the prior support of the privatization will remain intact and provide the fruitful results. So, so uh, policy environment supported by the uh, conduciveness of the uh, reforms like uh, ease of doing business, reduced cost of doing business, and the and the clarity on the uh, on the uh, policies of the government like uh, sometimes uh, uh, policies are not that much clear and not supported by the uh, level playing field uh, like the uh, like the rate of interest rate of interest is very very high and the private sector is facing a lot of problems in the uh, cost of capital so if the cost of capital remains high then the price cost margins are also impacted so at this juncture i believe uh, there must be support uh, at each and every juncture, firstly, with the reduced cost of doing business and secondly, conduciveness of the policy environment and thirdly, the synchronization of policy environment with the uh, thought process of the government. So right. these are the, the right. crucial points for the uh, for the success of uh, uh, this, this investment story going forward. Okay, talking about going forward, time now to get quick closing comments from all my panelists with the best way forward. I've got about two minutes left on the program, so very briefly. Starting first with you, Mr. Tripathi. I think uh, this government uh, is more clear in respect of policy uh, direction. It, 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 it uh, has identified companies where strategic disinvestment can take place. Uh, the previous government was um, more in favor of disinvesting some shares rather than disinvesting control. So here, since the strategic disinvestment is uh, permitted and several companies have been identified. Of course, it's a mixed bag. Some will find uh, attractive investment, some may not. But the government has to go forward even if the uh, investment in some of the companies is not uh, very attractive because they are uh, more or less uh, have now become 
uh, a burden on the exchequer and they are not really serving the core interests of the uh, of the government and the public therefore the government should divest them so i am uh, for it, for it and i hope the government has done due diligence will provide necessary framework of policy support so that uh, there are enough uh, bidders and uh, it will be a transparent process of course that may take a little time because the process has to be transparent and fair but it should uh, even if it does not complete in this year it should go forward it should not be constrained by the fact that uh, the budget requires so much money therefore it should be completed in this year they should follow a transparent and fair process and complete it okay shubhamoy well you know the big uh, advantage already has been that uh, the bugbear of opposition from different interest groups already we haven't talked about it i mean in the last half an hour we didn't so clearly we have moved a considerable degree in terms of making this investment more acceptable as a public policy and i think that that that's something uh, which is very difficult to come up in india in many policies so that itself is i think a major achievement and uh, sp sharma close the show for us with your concluding remark yes um, uh, i would say that, that disinvestment is now very much part of the economic policy environment of uh, government of india and going forward this will be a good move and uh, support the government in terms of revenue and in terms of addressing the fiscal deficit which is now challenged by the covid because now the fiscal deficit will be very very high as compared with the uh, last uh, few years because now the uh, Uh, uh gdp to fiscal deficit ratio because gdp is now deteriorating and fiscal deficit will be high uh, in proportionate terms so at this juncture we need support we need uh, support of the uh, uh, natural resources we need support of the major strengths of the indian economy and psus are a major Uh, uh, uh major growth provider and ma- major contributor at this juncture to support the economy and to move forward and to become a 5 trillion dollar economy by 24 25 thank you all right so on that note then i'll call it to wrap on this edition of the big picture thank you to all my guests for joining me on the program and putting things into perspective for us what's coming out of this discussion is that the time is right for certain entities to Uh, be disinvested and uh, they may find takers but not all of them may go, uh, you may find takers is what the panelists are suggesting the role of the private sector is crucial during this economic crisis the private sector is important to boost the growth trajectory india has a lot of potential and we are well on our way to reaching the 5 trillion dollar economy mark is what uh, mr sharma is suggesting policy reforms in consultation with all the stakeholders is what is important going forward the disinvestment target of 2.1 lakh crore rupees and likely is unlikely to be met this year considering the present market conditions but that does not mean that we do not go ahead with it we must go ahead with it in a transparent manner with that it's a wrap see you again next time